Yeah, I mean, if there was a PUA, right, like if someone was a pickup artist and he's trying to sleep with as many women as possible, that guy would be an attractor. Like, you know, what do I do? I attract women. That's my thing. Yeah. Man, but, the PUA community, like that's like it started with that one show, The Pickup Artist. Did you ever watch that show? Man, I don't watch any of that stuff. Yeah, well, that was like what, it, it, like, it just gave a bunch of these guys like, wait a minute, there's a there's an art to this, and the guy that uh, like was the host of the show was called Mystery. I have his book. I haven't read it. The yeah, Mystery, Mystery Method. And I think there was an Indian guy there too named Matador. So when you're like seeing these guys, like, wait a minute, like, and this was on mass TV. It was on VH1, I believe. So like the nation was like being exposed to this. And they started to get a lot of controversy because that's where you initially heard like the phrase called like peacocking, um, negs. Like there's certain language in regards to that. And then like, you know, a lot of guys tried it out. They're like, all right, guys, we're going to the mall and we're going to do what Mystery told us to do. <laughs> and th that's how it initially started. And um, do you know any P PUAs? I know a PUA, yes. Mm hmm from the u.s not I, I don't know any puas in india i know I a couple of puas in the u.s but i know one really successful one the rest are just posing as the uas mm -hmm. i don't think those guys get laid as much yeah i know a but few this really PUAs successful too. guy yeah. is just like sorry go on no go ahead go ahead this the guy who's really successful as a pua he kind of deserves to be successful as a PUA because that guy has designed his entire lifestyle around getting laid. So he lives in a mansion. He has a Lamborghini. He has abs. And again, he's very shredded. And this is what he does. So he sells some courses around getting laid on Tinder and all these, you know, apps mm -hmm. and, you know, how to text women and things like this. That's what, that's how he makes his money. And this guy essentially spends most of his day dating women or sleeping with women or, you know, texting women, etc. So that's his thing. His entire lifestyle is based around fucking women. Mm. Like I have a mansion, like this guy has a mansion because, you know, girls are attracted to mansions. He has abs because girls like that. He has Lamborghini to show he's rich and he makes his money teaching others how to get laid. And that's what he does all day. He gets laid all day. What are your thoughts about this? I mean, it's an honest income. I don't, I don't have any negative comments to make for him. Oh, okay, no, because no, the way that you were phrasing it, I thought you were gonna be like, "But that can never be me," or it was just like you were just basically outlining his lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, this guy is doing what he wants to do in his life. He's happy with it. Mm. Uh, I don't have an issue with it. Yeah, I man, do think where... that at some point he's gonna run out of girls in his local area and have have to like change his residence. Because if he's sleeping with like one girl a day, you know, how many girls can you find on these apps? Yeah, man. I mean, if you optimize your life for that, like you can really like it eventually becomes a numbers game in some ways, too. Like I knew this one guy that literally looked like Harry Potter, but like a skinny dweeby version of him. And he used to pull. But this guy's um, whole philosophy was like, I'm just going to flirt with anything with a pulse. <laughs> and eventually, eventually, like he's getting like he's getting some numbers, like not 100 percent of people are going to reject you. Eventually, there's going to be some um, yeses in the flurry of no's. So he he like pretty much optimized his life for that. And he was over here just like pulling. Um, so I don't know if he if he's still doing that, but I recall like the last time I spoke to him, he just was like like he felt as though he wanted like something a little bit more but um maybe that was the phase of his life that he was going through each person is different so they, they, you got to see like what they're optimizing their life for that's fair enough i think that i think most guys when they do the pua stuff they get over it eventually in my case i wasted like almost a year just dating women but then after a while, I was like, wait a minute, I'm just done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. This is a waste of time. And I can continue to do to, to do this, keep getting better with women. But this is like the, the returns are extremely diminishing from this point. 
I've improved my personality enough that I can talk to any girl I want whenever I want. And, you know, I don't really need to constantly keep doing this. And I should just focus on my work, get richer. You know, now is the time to make money, start the business and everything, not go on dates every three days of the week. So I think most guys are like me in that sense where after you date a little bit around, you you just get done with it. Yeah. It is one thing I will give it credit for. It's like if you do that, if you do have that little, like one section of your life where you did do cold approaching and stuff, bro, it could boost your confidence and just social skills in general by a lot. Like if you do it correctly, if you're not just being like weird about it and just like, I'll just say whatever and like hopefully one person says yes, you're like trying to be present and be dynamic, it can like really build some good body language like good eye contact and it's just a little micro skill like breaking the ice um but yeah you do not want to just like from my perspective you don't want to like rotate your entire life like going to the malls and like breaking ice with strangers like you could do that for a certain chapter but your entire life like come on man yeah man it's not it's just overkill when, so when the pickup artist show came, like I, I had like two good friends, like Asif and Pratik. They're like, guys, we're going to the mall. So we end up going to the mall, and like Asif's like this big fat Bengali kid, and Pratik's this like dorky Indian kid. And Pratik is just like, you know, like he has like a lot of charisma for some reason. I'm like, I don't know where you got all that charisma from, but he has all these girls giggling and stuff. And he's just like, okay, so I talk to girls. Now you have to do it, Asif. And Asif is like this big guy with like no confidence. And he eventually talked to girls. And then they're like, okay, Armand, it's your turn. And I was like, man, I'm like really nervous. Like this is like really early on in my life. I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to say something. And they're like, come on, Armand, like you could do it. So eventually I go up to this girl and I'm about to say something. And she's just like, get the fuck out of my face. And she just walks away. And Asif and Pratik saw that. It's just like, right? Like the, literally the worst thing that could have happened, like happened. And after that happened, bro, they're like, oh, all right, Armand, like, uh, l- l- let's go home. You know, like they, they felt bad for me. And I was like, no, let's do this more. Uh, and they're just like, wait, what? It's because I got the worst part out of the way. And it wasn't like that bad. Like when someone says like, get the fuck out of my face, something like that. It's just like, wait, what? And then you're like, oh, okay. And now you could go to the next, um, to the next person. And then like I started to talk to a few other girls, and like like the third one was like giggling and stuff. So it's like if you do it the correct way, man, like it could build your confidence to a certain degree. I agree with you a hundred percent. It's very similar going to, to is yeah, inefficient, very, though. Yeah, but but you got to remember like the context. Like this was like two thousand like seven like or 2006 uh-huh. like we, we didn't have like bump oh, yeah we didn't have bumble or anything it, it's very similar to like choking a speech for the first time where a lot of people will never like even think about giving up a speech because they're like well i'm going to like what if i choke and it's like if you do choke hypothetically like it, it could actually be one of the best moments of your life or like when I choke my first speech, I'm just like, man, like, you know, like, it's so embarrassing. Like, no one's going to forget. No one's going to, uh, like, ever forget something like this. Three days passes on by, everyone forgot. And I'm just like, you know, I'm like, I got the worst part out of the way. So a lot of the times, man, when you're learning something new, like, the thing that's, like, scaring you the most, if that actually does happen to you, now you're like, okay, well, I got the worst part out of the way. And now let me just, you know, keep inching closer towards the goal. Man, this whole thing is such an important topic where people have to realize that no one remembers them. So three days later, everyone forgot, right? Yeah. A lot of people don't do things because they're so self-conscious where they think this is going to be, you know, this is going to be their thing in life. You know, they fail at this thing. This is their thing. But really, no one gives a shit. If you have an embarrassing moment, people are going to forget about it in like six hours. No one cares about you enough to remember everything you do or everything you say. And if you like something or want to do something, you should just do it. And if you fail, you fail. You might get laughed at for an hour, but then it's done. Then it's done. Like your biggest problem to someone else's nervous system is not worth more than their smallest problem. 
So if I say hypothetically, like, hey, Harsh, I'm go like the police are after me. Like I, I accidentally killed someone, blah, 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 blah. I'm about to go to prison. Someone will hear it. They're like, oh, my God, that's a really big problem for Armani. And then they're going to go back to thinking about like the parking ticket that they have to do within 72 hours, even less. So it's like when you put it into perspective like that, it's like, bro, I got to be more fearless with my life. Definitely. Although I have one caveat for this, okay? Mm -hmm. You you want to be more fearless, but you want to avoid shitting where you eat in the sense that, let's say, let, let's continue the previous example, okay? Let's say that you're asking girls out. You want to be brave and you want to ask a girl out if you like her. Because even if she says no, it's going to be embarrassing for like five minutes and then it's going to be done. But you want to do this stuff in places where this is not going to turn on, turn into some kind of reputation for you. For mm -hmm. example, if you are asking girls out in your workplace and like five girls say no to you, then you're screwed, right? Then you're known as oh, a yeah. weird guy who's asking all these girls out. Mm -hmm. And now you know, you're, you're like a creep. So you want to do <laughs> these things at places where there is no social cost to it. You know, these, these people you, you don't see again and they're not going to remember you and you don't have to like go and meet them every day. So that's one caveat, you know, just make sure that you're being brave and, you know, doing bold things in places where the social cost is low to none. If you're asking girls out where you work, you might have issues at your employ with your employer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's a good caveat. Have you ever had a PUA phrase, Arman? I mean, I would say that was a close thing. Like after we saw like the pickup artist, um, because the thing is, like, I believe I was in high school then, and like we basically were just looking for things to do. So it's like we were already going to the malls. So it's like if we're gonna go to the malls, like, uh, let's try out some of the stuff that like mystery taught us, and it's like we did that. Um, so I would say that was close to a PUA stage. And it was good, man, because, you know, I, I grew up in a very strict household, so I didn't really go to that many parties in, um, up until I went to college. So in high school, it just kind of gave me some lubricant in terms of social interactions. And I understood what it's like to talk to a girl, right? What is it like to grow up in an Islamic household? Well, it's, it's not like... Uh, it wasn't like super like strict like that. Like I could still go out with my uh, friends and stuff, but like I couldn't like do sleepovers and stuff, which wasn't like that big of a deal. I didn't go to parties um, or anything like that. So I'm pretty sure it's like a lot of the other kids out there, but it was just like, I didn't go to parties. So that was about ah, it. Same here, man. Same stuff. I couldn't do sleepovers and I couldn't do parties. I'm not Islamic, of course, but yeah, I think all traditional cultures try to avoid these things and avoid the kids from doing these things.